What was that? Oh my god, what is that? He needs some milk! What is that? What in the hell? Stop scrolling. This video found you for a reason. That's weird. It's giving JLo's career. I'm gonna be blue really honest with you. There is something they're not telling us. Wait, what the washed up twink? Bruh. Only no millions have it. 2024, year of the life sims. Or year of the life flops. Today we're going to talk about some upcoming life sim games and in typical Malcolm fashion. I'm not holding back. It's uh, it's that me espresso. This, this is actually cold brew though. Okay. So I'm going to start by spilling the tea on life by... Where even is the camera? This is so weird. Oh, my bad. I mean, Life by... Ew! When Life by You came on the scene, I was completely and utterly smitten. Especially as someone with the Sims 3 bias, it had everything I wanted in a Life Sim game. Open world. Customizations. Mobbitability. So oh, big Rod. And coming in June? Sign me up. Come on now. I felt that the Life by You team was being super transparent. I mean, they released a video every week for like a year, and for the most part, they seemed to be listening to player feedback. But then came the delays. The first of which came in September of 2023. We are moving the start of early access for Life by You to March 5th. 2024. But at that point, my delusional self was like, oh, that'll give me enough time to finally finish the legacy challenge I've been doing for the last two and a half years. The lies. So I was like, it's fine. But then came the second delay in March of this year. We are moving the start of early access for Life by You to June 4th, 2024. And I was like, okay, that's just three more months. And at that time, I was in the middle of some war with Sims 4 stands on Twitter. By the way, follow me on Twitter. But then, nearly two weeks from early access release, a third delay. And this time was different because there was no reassuring video from Big Rod, the man in charge, to accompany the delay. Sweet, innocent Big Rod, where did you go? I can't. I can't. But instead, this delay came with a cold, sterile press release. Not from the studio developing the game, but from the corporate overlords at Paradox Interactive. So, what happened? Well, actually... Nobody knows. Because for the last few weeks since the delay announcement, it's been radio silence. That's right, we all got ghosted. The fourth time this month. But the interwebs are rife with conspiracy theories, with people saying the game has been cancelled completely and the Life by You team has all been fired. So is this true? Uh, how the hell would I know? But let's take a step back. Life by You has been in development since March of 2019. That's five years worth of development. And I don't see why any company would invest that much time and resources into developing a product just to abandon it at the last minute. Paradox Interactive has been dealing with a lot of criticism as of late, particularly when it comes to City Skylines 2 and its buggy release. If you're unaware of what happened with that game, this official apology from Paradox Interactive will suffice in explaining exactly how problematic that game's launch was. And while this history of rocky launches is reason enough for Paradox to be solicitous in its approach to Life by You, it certainly does not justify canceling the game altogether. So let's put those rumors to rest, because that is just ridiculous. But I know some of you are still going to be out there like, but three delays? That's suspicious. And yeah, I agree, but it's also not the first game in history to encounter multiple delays, let alone the first Paradox game. Some of you might know that Prison Architect 2 is also on its third delay, set to release in September of this year. Allegedly, allegedly. More likely than not, Paradox is simply playing it safe. 
And another messy launch is not a mistake that they can afford to make. Regardless, a lot of prospective players are furious about the sudden radio silence from the Life by You team. Just text me back, Rod. But yeah, I don't really think this is a bad thing or that big of a deal at all. And to be honest, I said this before, but I hate the idea of big companies doing early access anyway. So in the end, Life by You, I pray we never hear from you again. Uh, until release day, that is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The queen is coming. Oh my god! Oh, girlies, I'm not flexing, I'm just... It is about time we talked about Inzoi. I don't know why so many people seem to hate that I have an opinion about this game. The sheer amount of angry comments I get on my Inzoi videos is ridiculous. Even on my last video, I had so many people just straight up saying, you're lying. And there were even people going around to other content creators videos about Inzoi and saying, Malcolm lied about what happened. Girl. Um, and, I j and I do just want to say, first of all, that's absurd. Secondly, I think it's sort of weird to put so much effort into going around defending a game created by a billion dollar company, a game that's not even out, a game that we still know so little about. That's weird. That's so weird. <laughs> I know a lot of people love this game. They love the aesthetic. They're vibing with it. It's giving nothing yet everything and uh let me just start by saying here's how i feel about enzoi airstrikes bomb them bomb them keep bomb i'm so sorry my cat just walked across the keyboard truly honestly anyway the big enzoi news uh wait there's nothing honest to goddess i wish there was something anything new i could share with you about enzoi but the game's social channels are barren the Enzoi subreddit rivals JLo's career. Since the last update in April, when the Enzoi team answered questions that literally nobody asked, all while showcasing some gorgeous gameplay that barely hit 15 frames per second, we've heard crickets. After that video in April, the Enzoi team had been promising a part 2 Q&A that was supposed to come out last week, but they suddenly cancelled it. I said in my last video that the Enzoi team is being intentionally vague when it comes to answering basic questions about this game. It sort of seems like the developers are being intentionally vague, but why? And what are these basic questions? Some questions I have, and this is just off the top of my head, what's the monetization model? Will it be online? only? How will multiplayer be implemented? Are AI assets ethically sourced? What are the minimum recommended specs? And why would they release official footage of the game running at 15 frames per second? Did they think people wouldn't notice? And what does this tell us about Enzoi's potential performance when the game has flaunted its hyper-realistic graphics but can't even run well on a high-end PC? I'm only looking for a modicum of transparency here, yet it appears that the Enzoi team is strategically choosing to not not answer questions. Either A, they don't know the answers to these questions, which I find to be very unlikely, or B, they're worried that their answers to these questions will upset or turn off prospective players. I'll let you decide for yourself that the answer is B. <laughs> so I don't know, you guys can call me paranoid if you want, but I do believe there's something they're not telling us. I'm not saying the game is fraudulent or that it's fake or anything. I've just seen a lot of shady things happen. They're being very tight-lipped. Their responses to a lot of questions, for example, about the monetization model is always, we don't know yet. But you can't have a team of 70 employees and not have any clue what your business philosophy is. So yeah, there's still a lot we don't know about this game and inevitably there's going to be stuff that comes out that's going to be like huge turnoffs to a lot of people. I don't know, I just wish they would be more transparent in general. After all, Crafton is also a publicly traded company that answers to its shareholders. 
And compared to Life by You, for example, I think the stakes for Crafton are much, much higher. Like, if you consider the size of the Enzoi team, which I've heard is around 70 employees, that's a huge team, as well as the sheer amount of money they've sunk into this project with the use of motion capture technology. The marketing? I mean, that was given Oprah. They did send me a gaming PC. And they did, like, 3D scans of entire cities. What in the year 3000 is happening? <laughs> Anyway, Crafton is heavily invested in this game, so in that way it's a big gamble for them and it has to be a financial success. They really can't afford any blunders, besides the one they already made where they kicked an influencer out of the Discord when they asked if gay marriage is in the game, and then that influencer made a whole video talking about it. I helped feel that. I know. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, Inzoi, I wish you nothing but the most straight and narrow of successes. So in the end, despite the people who've accused me of being paid by Paradox, which is absolutely ridiculous, I actually don't care whether Life by You, or Enzoi for that matter, is a success or a complete flop. I think it would be good for the future of this genre to have more competition, but I'm perfectly happy just playing The Sims 3 as I have for the last two and a half years on this channel. And yeah, is there something I'm missing? Oh my god, I completely forgot about you. The Sims 5. It's, it's not even on my radar or EA's radar. Because as far as I can see, they're more focused on trying to reach that 100th DLC milestone for The Sims 4. So excited for her. Thankfully, I guess we'll always have The Sims 3. But in the meantime, let me know what upcoming live sim games you're most looking forward to. Also, feel free to leave as many hate comments as you want to down below. It really helps with the algorithm. And also unsubscribe while you're at it. It also helps fuel my victim complex. But uh, anyway, love you guys profusely. More gameplay videos coming soon. I promise. I promise. Thank <laughs> you.